Most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living in return with having. What's truly amazing is what people coming in from foreign lands and international statuses are thinking they have the right to do to American citizens. You see, people who are here illegally will usually continue to do illegal and immoral things. My whole adult life I have experienced this. People who come here lawfully will not do things illegally or immorally. I know this from working for a very long time with one of the major favored nation statuses of Japan. My late spouse came here lawfully. Everything she did for her life and eventually our life became quite lawful. We had special permissions to do a lot of things outside the lines of her actual status as an international citizen. That's all I'm going to say because the details are a little muddled in my brain from when we did it all, but at the same time, it's none of your fucking business at all. A man like me is going to tell you stories. The first story with the storylines that we need to think about today is what's happening in our food industry. Our food industry is being over and inundated by a lot of different nations' people. The reason is predominantly because parents of white Americans and black Americans are not lawful in front of God. What I mean is they are not being taught the value of being a pro person who understands farming, gross national product, and the things that keep us alive in American culture. This is very different in a third world nation that has very difficult times in these things. The American water system is essential to the living and the future of all people all families, all legacies of America. The production of farming, the production of produce, the production of animal husbandry is essential for making America still living in the future. This is not rocket science, people. This is common sense. We must develop the future farmers of America. We must also develop people who understand how to handle horses, pigs, chickens, sheep and any other thing that is presently lawful and presently healthy for the American cellular system in terms of our body to eat. You see in foreign lands where there is a disgruntled employee is not usually an issue because all of them know the value of working. But the arrogance of the young American child, the teenager, the twenty something is out of control and completely out of style with where America as a nation, as a huge leader in the world must go. It is an abomination to the Lord for you to not teach your children the value of quality food. It is an abomination to the Lord Most High that you think your children have the right to be rude in food. It is an abomination to the Christ figure that you all profess to love to taint someone's rights to healthy, safe, moral food. In America, we have a lot of junk food, but there's junk food abroad too. Some of it comes from America, but a lot of it comes from their own manufacturers of food. For all we know, it could be a duplicate company of an American company simply producing something else in a foreign language, in a foreign nation, or just in foreign park, uh, packaging with foreign lettering on it. The truth is in certain countries, certain flavors and certain things are not a part of their nation. But in America, we have this incredible restaurant system. We have an incredible grocery shop system where we're not trading chickens and eggs for pigs and poultry like you could see in old stories and, and revere on old ancient concepts of the Nordic track and people on TV right now playing those historic realms, playing the realms of England, playing the realms of, of Greek mythology and pr playing the realms of Vikings who all knew about trade. We're also not playing in the realms of the old development of the railroad where the Chinese made an incredible impact on not only how we got around and we were mobile, but also on how we handled our laundry, how we handled our food. They brought us forward and a lot of soups and a lot of marvelous things that we love about that land. We also love their military, not at all, but we love their action stars, their incredible aerobat aerobatic people and we love their cultural arts. But here's the reality. When it comes to America, we are here, thankfully, because of settlers who drove 
not at all, who literally rode across the seas surviving hurricanes, surviving sharks, probably, surviving all sorts of things of the land and air to make it here. And once we got here, we nearly starved to death because we're stupid, of course, not knowing what we would find here. Plymouth Rock was not full of incredible ocean front property. It was a difficult, desolate place. So as we moved further inland and found more plush, lush scenery, we had to figure out how to harvest it, how to survive the animals here, and how to win. If it wasn't for people like we know historically, which she wasn't the only one, Pocahontas, who took the time to make sure we didn't starve, we still wouldn't be here. Other lands, peoples, Eskimos, etc., Native Indians would still be here. It is true that the Wild Wild West was a rough place, but today in America, this is not the fucking Wild West, motherfucker. And you better start knowing our con constitutional rights are being violated by shitbags from foreign countries. They literally come here and use all sorts of technologies that we and our children have never seen before, never heard before, and never learned before. What we also have our own children who are American who are abusing our rights with the learning of certain technologies from their audio engineering programs and others that just devoid us of our rights. The reason that we are building a border is absolutely right. We don't have the ability to handle the morbidity rate, the crime rate, the abuse rate, the rape rate of people from foreign lands who haven't learned to get along. The entire purpose of Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek was to teach people to get along in the, the land in ter terms of creating the concept of races. And if you never took a history of television program, you missed out. I had probably one of the baddest little motherfuckers in his 30s who taught us those things in school at university and openly I don't have to tell you where I went but it was one of my best courses because I learned so much about the theory and the history of film and what it teaches us and how it educates us we also know that we've had a lot of prophetic films if you will science fiction films if you will over the last five to ten probably 15 20 years that have given us a premonition given us a vision of where life could go we certainly have had films that have talked about a human virus. We certainly have films that have shared with us things that probably the folks in the government knew possibly could come based on their own scientific discoveries. But here's the deal. We didn't find that information through just a casual conversation, although some presidents could bring that about through the quality relationships they had with other prime ministers from other worlds a world away. But what I'm talking about today is the reality of our lives, that we are ill-prepared to face the world today. We are underprivileged, not at all. We are overprivileged to a point, and we have children that are so fucking arrogant that they really are out of sight today. We have to have young people coming out of our junior highs and our high schools interested in having culinary skills. Thank God for Chef Ramsey, who is developing that on cable networks, and the love of food is something that American television producers knew we had to produce. Not only do we have to produce a love of travel and a love of exploration of different type of dives and different places of mom and pop shops, because, let's face it, the entire American nation, every fucking one of us, has benefited from small businesses. They didn't have corporations when we were in the early days of the, gosh, 1800s and earlier or later than that. And I am not going to be a prof professor of American history. But you people need to start regarding the people who handle your food. But more importantly, the people who handle our food better start fucking regarding where they get their dollars for their salaries. It doesn't matter what you chose for your life, motherfucker, in terms of handling our food, serving our dishes, and literally being employed to stock our shelves. You've got one of the best jobs in the fucking world if you're one of my people. Because what you're doing is being totally entrusted with my food and others' food. But when you allow these foreigners to come into your restaurants and you don't check them for their, their actual military ideas or their actual international ideas, ideas you are fucking American nations. We don't need foreigners handling our food. And I'll just be honest. How do you tell the difference is a real good question. When it comes to telling the difference between an American and a non-American, most of us can do that. 
we can take a li one little look at the lines of a person's face and the alignment of their teeth and the quality of their hair, the, in the incredible depth or width or height, however you look at it, as someone's frow, and we know whether or not they're here or from here or not. It's no different when you live abroad in Asia. What I'm talking about is the intelligence of Asia in terms of East Asia, not mid not Middle East Asia. Of East Asia, when I'm in Japan, I can absolutely tell, because I've been there long enough, who's actually Japanese and who's Korean and who's Chinese and who's from Thailand. It's not hard to tell. But the bottom line is that we have to have international exchanges, probably no more. We've done plenty of that. We know plenty about that. And I'm not disparaging any nation. I'm just saying it's time to protect our own. So as this time of COVID goes around cleaning house in the world, praise God for your life. Praise the Lord that you're still alive and stop playing in the realms of food.